Cinderella or the Little Glass Slippers. There lived once a gentleman who married for his second wife, the proudest woman ever seen. She had two daughters of the same spirit, who were indeed like her in all things. On his side, her husband had a young daughter, who was of great goodness and sweetness of temper. In this, she was like her mother, who was the best woman in the world. No sooner was the wedding over than the stepmother began to show her ill humor. She could not bear her young stepdaughter's gentle ways because they made those of her own daughters appear a thousand times more odious and disagreeable. So she employed her in the meanest work of the house. She it was who must wash the dishes and rub the tables and chairs, and it was her place to clean Madame's chamber and that of the misses, her daughters. She herself slept in a sorry garret upon a wretched straw bed, while her sister's rooms had shining floors and curtained beds and looking-glasses so long and broad that they could see themselves from head to foot in them. The poor little girl bore everything with patience, not daring to complain to her father. When she had finished her work, she used to sit down in the chimney-corner among the cinders, so that in the house she went by the name of Cinder Wench. The youngest of the two sisters, however, being rather more civil than the eldest, called her Cinderella. But Cinderella, ragged as she was, looked a hundred times more charming than her sisters, decked out in all their splendor. It happened that the king's son gave a ball, to which he invited all the persons of fashion for miles around. Our two misses were among the number, for they made a great figure in the country. They were delighted with this invitation, and were wonderfully busy choosing such dresses as might become them. This was a new trouble for Cinderella, for it was she who ironed her sister's linen and plaited the ruffles. There was little then talked of, but what dresses should be worn at the ball? I, said the eldest, will wear my crimson velvet gown. I, said the youngest, will wear a dress all flowered with gold and a brooch of diamonds on my hair. Yet they sent for Cinderella to ask her advice, for she had excellent taste. She helped them as much as she could, and even offered to dress their hair, which was exactly what they wanted. While she was busy over this, her sister said to her, Cinderella, should you not be glad to go to the ball? Ah. Uh, said she. You but mock me. It is not for such as I am to go thither. You are in the right of it, replied they. 
It would make the folk laugh to see a cinder wench at the ball. Any other than Cinderella would have dressed their hair awry. But she was good and did nothing but her best. At last, the happy moment arrived. They all set off. And Cinderella looked after them till they passed from her sight. When she sat down and began to cry. Her godmother came in and seeing her in tears asked what ailed her. I want. Oh. I want. Sobbed. Poor Cinderella, without being able to say another word. Her godmother, who indeed was a fairy, said to her, You want to go to the ball, isn't it so? Oh, yes, said Cinderella, sighing. Well, then, said her godmother, but be but a good girl, and I will contrive that you shall go. Then taking her kindly by the hand, she said, Run now into the garden, and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella flew at her bidding and brought back the finest she could get. Her godmother scooped out the inside, and leaving nothing but the rind, this done, she struck it with her wand, and the pumpkin was instantly changed into a fine coach, gilded all over with gold. She then went to look into the mouse trap, where she found six mice, all alive. She told Cinderella to raise the door of the mouse trap, and each mouse came out. At one tap of her wand, they changed into splendid horses. So now Cinderella had a coach and six horses of a fine dappled mouse colour. Here, my child, are your coach and horses, said the godmother. But what shall we do for a coachman? Run and see if there be not a rat in the trap. Cinderella brought the trap, and in it were three huge rats. The fairy made choice of the biggest of the three, and having touched him, he was turned into a fat, jolly coachman who mounted the hammer cloth in a trice. She next said to Cinderella, Go again into the garden, and you will find six lizards behind the watering pot. Bring them hither. She had no sooner done so then her godmother turned them into smart footmen, who at once skipped up behind the coach. Then said the fairy, Now, then, here is something that will take you to the ball. Are you pleased with it? Oh, yes cried she. 
but must I go in these dirty clothes? Her godmother only touched her with her wand, and her clothes were turned into cloth of gold and silver, all beset with jewels. This done, she gave her a pair of glass slippers, the prettiest in the world. Being thus decked out, she got into her coach, but her godmother bade her, above all things, not to stay past midnight, telling her that if she stayed a single moment longer, all her fine things would return to what they had been before. She promised her godmother she would not fail to leave the ball before midnight, and then away she drove. The king's son, being told that a great princess had come, ran out to receive her. He gave her his hand as she stepped from her coach and led her among all the company. Cinderella no sooner appeared than everyone was silent. Both the dancing and the music stopped. And then all the guests might be heard whispering, <gasps> Oh, how handsome she is! All the ladies were busied in gazing at her clothes and head dress, that they might have made some after the same pattern. The king's son took her to the dance with him. She danced so gracefully that they all the more had admired her. A fine supper was served up, whereof the young prince ate not a morsel. So intently was he busied in gazing on her. She sat down by her sisters, giving them part of the fruit which the prince had presented her with, which very much surprised them. While Cinderella was thus talking with her sisters, she heard the clock strike eleven and three quarters, whereupon she immediately made a curtsy to the company and then hastened. Being got home, she thanked her godmother and said she would not but wish she might go next day to the ball, because the king's son had desired her. While she was telling her godmother all that had passed, her two sisters knocked at the door, and Cinderella opened. How long you have stayed, <sighs> cried she, pretending to yawn. If you had been at the ball, said one of them. Let me tell you, sleepiness would not have fallen on you. There came thither the very handsomest princess ever seen with eyes. She showed us a thousand kindnesses and gave us oranges and citrons. Cinderella asked the name of the princess, but they told her they did not know it, and that the king's son was uneasy, and would give all the world to know who she was. At this, Cinderella, smiling, replied, She must be very beautiful. Could I not see her? Ah, dear Miss Charlotte! Do lend me your yellow suit of clothes that you wear every day. Oh, indeed, cried Miss Charlotte. Lend my clothes to such a dirty cinder wench as thou art. The next day, the two sisters went to the ball, and so did Cinderella, dressed more magnificently than she had been the first night. The king's son was always with her and said the kindest things to her imaginable. 
She was so far from feeling wearied by this that she forgot the charge her godmother had given her. So she at last counted the clock striking twelve when she took it to be no more than eleven. She then fled as nimble as a deer. The prince followed, but could not overtake her. She dropped one of her glass slippers, which the prince carefully took up. She got home all out of breath, without a coach or footman, and in her old clothes, having nothing left of all her finery but one of the little slippers. The guards at the gate were asked if they had seen a princess go out, but they said they had seen nobody except a young girl, very meanly dressed. When the two sisters returned, Cinderella asked them if they had been as much amused as the night before, and if the beautiful princess had been there. They told her, yes but that she hurried away at twelve o'clock so fast that she dropped one of her glass slippers, which the king's son had taken up, and that he was surely in love with the person to whom the slipper belonged. What they said was perfectly true, for the king's son caused it to be given out that he would marry her, whose foot this slipper would exactly fit. So they began by trying it on the princesses, then on the duchesses, and all the court, but in vain. They then brought it to the two sisters, who both tried all they could to force their feet into the slipper, but without success. Cinderella, who was looking at them all the while, could not help smiling, and said, Let me see what I can do with the slipper, which made her sisters laugh heartily. Ha! Very likely, they said. That it would fit your clumsy foot. The gentleman who was sent to try the slipper saw that she was very handsome, and said he had been ordered to try it on everyone he might please. Then, putting the slipper to her foot, he found that it went on very easily, and fitted her as though it had been made of wax. The astonishment of the two sisters was great, but still greater when Cinderella drew out of her pocket the other slipper and put it on. At that very moment, in came her godmother, and with one touch of her wand made Cinderella appear more magnificent than ever. The sisters knew her again at once, and throwing themselves at her feet, begged pardon for the ill treatment they had made her undergo. Cinderella forgave them with all her heart, and begged that they would always love her. She was then led to the palace, where the young prince received her with great joy, and in a few days they were married. Cinderella was as good as she was beautiful, took her sisters to live in the palace, and shortly after